two, one, we are live. This is 2OF Entertainment. The three of us. The three of us. Well, I figured bears. we just. I figured instead of putting Joanne in, in the in the uh, green room, it'd just be the three of us, since it's going to be the three of us on today's show, and we're going to talk about AI art or AI in art, I guess. The three amigos in the wild, in go. the wild, in the wild west of AI. Well, uh, I think we're, well, lighting, we're we're starting to light a fire. I think that's uh, there you go. And the next time we do an AI show, we'll bring our AI artists that have shows on our channel. We've got a guy um, that does AI art. Just that's all he does. And we've got another artist who uses AI art and real art. And we've got a graphic. I so we can bring for a bigger discussion. But we figured this will be for the Canadian Art Today fans that have never seen any of the other shows. A good foundation of AI art and. What's being what's being done? What's not being done? What people think? What people don't think? And so on and so on. So we were talking a little off air about that. So this should just be a fun show. Not a lot of there'll be some pictures. So if you're here for the pictures today, eh, not so much. Um, but if you're here for uh, intellectual dialogue, once again, not so much. Um, but if you're here to learn a few things, this may be the show. So we'll see what we can do. <clears throat> maybe maybe so. I'll learn a little bit as well. I'm, I'm kind of a traditional <laughs> artist myself, and I'm Great. I'm in a learning stage of um is it something that i want to get into is it, is it mostly just for idea generation and i and i see a lot of artists that are wanting that um you know it's sort of getting past those mental blocks sometimes when you're you're trying to figure out where's my next step where am i going to go and he said well how how do i find that before you used to have to go aware library read books do different things you're basically sourcing information from somewhere mm -hmm. like now you're saying well can i search the internet somewhere through a word word uh association or voice and you uh away you go and i think it's an amazing thing for people who have handicap like it's just it can open a whole new world for a lot of people who have some abilities um oh, that but, explains why david does so well with it no. so <laughs> so david you know we love you yeah, uh, well, it's so, the old the well, old adage: they can't draw a line without you know a straight line. You know, is one of those things, right? And but go, we use well, AI though. But we use it though quite. We use it quite a bit on our shows. Um, for every thumbnail, like this thumbnail for this show today, will be generated by AI. Awesome. Um, all our shows have AI generated thumbnails, awesome. and we we don't take credit for it. Everyone knows it's AI because they've seen our thumbnails before AI. And we also use AI though to write descriptions and everything because it it's more creative than I'm going to be. And we use AI to draw our thumbnails. Now we have artists that have use AI to that's how they make a living. Like Morton from Ad Hoc, he's an AI artist. Um, you know Adam um, from Adam on the Eve, AI artist, right? This painting is not only AI generated that of his, but it's also he did stuff to it. So to your point, we prompt AI. We don't have it search. I'll say like for the cigar show for a joke once I said, give me a bear smoking a cigar, wearing a fedora. It produced a bear smoking a cigar with, and, it, and it looks great. So for people that are, I don't consider ourselves creators of anything. I just, so for people like us that have a YouTube channel or for people like us that need to come up with something, instead of me hiring out somebody and saying, All right, I'm going to pay you a hundred dollars, 200, whatever it is, every time I need a thumbnail, what uh dolly does that we use you, is you use me, dolly yeah we love dolly it gives yeah. me it gives me a thumbnail and it and i can go change this do that now what dolly does have a problem with is spelling uh -huh. we can spell a word we can spell a word out and i mean literally spell a word out and dolly will misspell it 26 times so everyone laughs when they find the end thumbnail they're like that's great it took you a second i'm like no it took about three hours because i go dolly you're spelling this word wrong and then it'll spell that word right, put another word wrong. So finally, we have to like cap it all. And it's like, oh, I get what you want. And so now we talk to Dolly and say, listen, take your time. Don't rush. Spell everything correct. It's like I'm talking to a five-year-old. And if I do that, it seems to work. So, 
in, pre in preparation for the talk, I did uh, right. search out some platforms uh, right. for artists to use. I mean, maybe putting the cart ahead of the horse. However, there are 15 pretty good um, platforms or apps that artists can use to, to right. whether you're doing a drawing or you're doing a painting or whatever you're doing. Um, I have been familiar with Dali E for quite some time, and that is where you actually put the verbal message in and right. something gets produced. But uh, there are other platforms um, which can do different things as well. And maybe it's worth, you know, exploring for artists to explore some of these other platforms. Um, Prisma is another good one where um, it converts photos into artwork by mimicking various famous painting styles. So there's okay. there are 15 that popped up when I used AI last night <laughs> on this. Right. Um, but anyway, sorry, I'm putting the cart before the horse, Paul. So, um, no, so no, we're just we're just uh, we're going to start slugging through it. I think. Uh, I mean, like I said, we we do want to say. There is some positives to these things, but there's also some areas of, you know, we have issues of copyright and yes. payment back to artists and the use of imagery. And what are you using it for? Are you using it for resale? Is that's one thing? If you're using it, to, in other words, to generate imagery using, say, other artists or other photographers or their imagery, have you paid for um, a usage rate from them, like a photography usage rate, very small in a royalty fee situation? Uh, it's justifiable if you're going to be producing, say, coffee mugs and you want to create an AI generated image for it and you used a bunch of things and you're going to make money from selling those coffee mugs. Um, how do you compensate some of those other ones that you found the imagery from? But um, you don't, though. That's the cool thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm going to take it from because I'm the investment banker, right? So, I'm the oldest profession. So, I'll, I'll defend AI today just for fun. <laughs> and I will um, too, quite frankly. Okay, there you go. So, and so, Paul, uh, I was good talking to you. You're gone. No. I'll, um, I'll, be devil's, <laughs> I'll be devil's advocate. There you go. But yeah. so, like, when we create merchandise for our channel, whether it's a coffee mug or a t shirt or whatever, right? David will, will go into Dolly or, or Minecraft or Midcraft or whatever things. Or I know Adam uses one where he can play around with it and he can control it and it does what he says so to speak so when it's controlling it ai is giving us ending with it with an image you know someone comes up with an idea and says you should have an image of xyz and we say okay we want an image of xyz and we tweak it and we tweak it and we tweak it and go that's the image so i'm not really stealing anybody's image now to your point if i'm saying pay it in the style of picasso or or Lichtenstein, somebody like that or, you know, or, or the pillow guy, Pito Max, if I want a pillowcase. Um, if, if I want something like that, maybe. But really, at the end of the day, AI is creating it based off of what I'm telling it to. And I and think, if, right. And what the yeah. artists don't understand, and people don't understand, it's what you tell it is what it produces. It's the same when I say write something, I have to be very specific. When right. I say create something, like the thumbnail. But be very specific on what you create and you play with it. It's like, I'm assuming, and I'm not an artist. I can draw a stick figure barely. You know, when you, when you have your painting, you look at it and Paul, you've told me this. And even Joanne said this on one of the shows, like, you know, they, a little touch here, a little touch there, you know, seven months later, it's done. Right. And we don't see what you see, the little touches in here and there. So for people like me that have no artistic ability, for me to say, talk to something and it creates something, I'm like, that's good for me. But well, if, if you if you were, for example, going to use Mickey Mouse on, right. on, on a mug. That's different. Okay. So that's a whole different animal. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there is a Mickey Mouse Protection Act in the United oh, States wow. where okay. um, you are, that would be a complete uh, infringement or violation. Right. Um, so there are, even if it's an image that is a popular image, let's say it's the Canadian flag, for example, right. on a mug, um, there would be very clear um, uh, licensing requirements that, right. in fact, you know, you, you, I don't know, Paul, you might know, you've got a nice Canadian flag on your head banner here. Um, are there copyright issues concerning the use of the Canadian flag? I think it's public domain as public far domain. as the flag goes. It's say, say what you're to use the uh, RCMP image. Now you have a problem because that is, and I think actually Disney now controls or used to control 
uh, because it was getting out of hand. It was getting out of hand. They had to have to do something about with uh, the visual identity of RCMP, uh, you know, man on the horse kind of a look with, you know, those kind of things. They're iconic images, right? So I think when you play with those things, you you're in you're in tough areas, right? But that doesn't mean you can't use it as a base for a drawing or a painting. Um, I mean, they're doing it all the time. There's, uh, you know, we have a number of artists that have produced pieces of work that are uh, talking about, um, um, you know, uh, what I guess I'm lacking the words here, residential schools and mm -hmm. all those kind of things. And they have the RCMP uh, taking people and doing things like that. So they weren't posed or they he hired models and he did more things and he created those things. They weren't created from AI. But uh, I, I guess I'm, there's areas where, say there's an artist that doesn't want his work copied in any way. You say, well, how, do you, how does that artist protect themselves? He said, well, in a copyright situation, he said they're talking about tag your work, maybe put a statement, don't put your stuff on Facebook and, and some of the social medias. Um, that is an open territory. But maybe on your social media, you actually put, your copyright statement right in your profile on each one of your platforms about your your stand on copyright like well, we can't, when you say, when, when, well if you, you use that. if you use low resolution image you can you, you can you can still put an, your image on on mm -hmm. instagram social media facebook or whatever but it is recommended that you put low resolution images on so that your artwork cannot be pirated um, it, it easily in that fashion. So, in other words, if the image is low res, um, the 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 pirated um, makers would not be as keen because the image isn't as clear. And likewise, watermark uh, watermarking on your work uh, and 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 that kind of thing, which protects against uh, physical images. But in terms of what is going on social media. Um, I quite frankly don't think that it's been figured out really very well. I think my position is that it is about the intent from the artist as to what they're doing and the authorship, meaning the the artist would need to disclose. I'm not talking about a mug on, on, on an image on a mug. I am talking about a physical piece of work that is produced. Mm -hmm. And I think it is always about clear intent from the artist as to, yes, they have produced AI generated an image. This is not from a human hand. Um, it is from the helper. Uh, AI is your helper. So I think that it is clear that, you know, this needs to be disclosed. Paul, I don't want to take up too much time, but I can tell you my experience in jurying work. Um, I would say over the last 12 months, this has become a big issue and i don't think that people have quite figured out what to do about it um i did jury a fairly large show in the spring there was it was quite clearly an ai generated image the artist did not disclose uh, we went back to the artist and said uh please tell me what this work is all about she she in no way disclosed any information um, we put it through reverse image search. We put it through tin eye, uh, to see if something popped back. Um, tin eye popped back and said, this was a very, uh, uh, painting done in, you know, 1875. So we went back to the artist and said, we're not going to accept your work. She was very unhappy the, 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 the intent is that had she disclosed that it was an AI generated image. I'm not sure what we would have done about it, but at least we would have said, okay, um, this is an AI generated image versus the 500 other submissions, which were not, how are we going to deal with this one? Right. Because you wanted original works. Always. Right. Right. So, but so let me ask you, so just say I submit my artwork, my stick figure. And I say to Dolly, listen, here's my stick figure. Now make it into whatever. And I submit it in theory. It is an original piece of work, right? Because it came out of my mind like a regular artist. But I would disclose it because I would say, listen, I did A, B through whatever. And Dolly did 
whatever through Zed. You but don't see, even have. I, I'm okay with if someone says that, but to say that it's a, and I say this to a lot of the digital artists that, well, some of them use digital art, not AI, but the ones that use AI, I'm like, your, your co, your co-producer is AI. It is. Right. And to me, like when Dave, David makes AI movies for our channel and David will put, which is always funny, you know, written and directed by a, AI old fart, you know, and that's the joke. But we tell everybody, we came up with a concept we gave it to ChatGPT 4.0 and said, now make a script and it makes a script and then he gives it to whoever and it makes it, and it's all the AI process, but we give credit to AI. Like there's no humans involved other than, you know, make a show about what X, X Y, or Z. And I think that I'm okay with. Me too. Yeah. They can't really copyright um, an AI produced image anyway. Like it's not copyrightable. That is true. It's not copyrightable. Uh, that will change. Yeah. At, over time, that will change. Yeah, I think because as artists work, we work individually and we have our own signature when we do our paintings and things like that. They have a look. So I think those word prompts become kind of, as we develop them, become kind of your signature. Because certain other people can't do the same kind of word prompts that you would maybe use, your language that you use. And it becomes, this is my look because I have this kind of language that I talk to AI with. Right. Um, it is a tool. And yeah. I think we are really at early stages of we are. acceptance. I mean, how many people, you know, dealing with Photoshop issues? I mean, I don't think photos are immiscible in court these days. In the old days, a black and white photo of the guy standing over with the blood pool and there's a knife. <laughs> that, was, that was that was immiscible. That immiscible. Was, that Not anymore. Court. Yeah, not anymore because everything can be generated in, in any which way. I mean, we have some great mems of our of your president <laughs> that have been created. <laughs> and you go, mm, I don't think he was ever in a McDonald's outfit, but it sure looks big. Oh, I, I think he really has been. I don't think that was generated at all. I think that's real. Um, no, no, I agree. With, I think it's. I think it's interesting though. I was reading an article in the Economist a few years ago, and it said at some point they're going to give AI rights. And I agree with it may not be in our, and whether it's 50 years from now or it's five months from now, yeah. AI is going to, some writer is going to come up with a script that he wrote with AI and I'm assuming they're doing it now. And it's going to be the next, I guess, Titanic or Avatar or whatever the hottest movie is or Gone with the Wind, if you will, and accolades. And he's going to accept the award and somewhere down the road, it's going to be like, but you wrote it with AI. So then you'll give it. So it'll be like, I wrote it with, so and so AI. Okay. Elon Musk is Elon Musk is doing that right now. What screwing he, up he, the world? Yes, he's doing a good job of it. <laughs> <laughs> he is he is trying to somehow figure out um, how how he can say that AI is a human created endeavor. I mean okay. so I think I think and I don't think it's going to be beyond our lifetime matter of fact i think it's going to be really soon um Maybe. and what i what i see when i when i talk to artists is i would i did a post paul you saw it an, an, um, a number of weeks ago when i talked about positively about the benefits of using ai in in your work i would have to say the majority of artists were against it hmm. they did they said they would never use ai uh, they didn't like what AI was doing in our industry. It was uh, denigrating our industry because these were not, you know, laboriously painting uh, a painting on a canvas. So I would say that it is in its infancy in our industry. But, but you know, my point was artists have always embraced new technology. They've been very quick to absorb and and take new ideas forward. Photoshop, digital art, um, you know, so many things they've been forward thinking. This is one where they're stalled out with it. And I think it is because um, A, they're not educated enough about it. Uh, and B, they really think that it is just, you know, going to change our industry so dramatically and if we hold out, we can still continue to work in our old ways of working, but that's not going to be possible. 
um, because AI generated images are happening all the time now. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a matter of trying to figure things out, have discussions like these, bring in artists' perspectives, what don't they like about it, uh, and and time to figure things out. Yeah, I but think also, it, it's interesting. If I mean, and if you go to galleries now, they have AI art and they have real art. And I, when I purchase art, I and it sounds horrible. I like real art. I like to know that an artist slaved over it or what. I there's soul. There's something to that. There's some soul to it, right? They did something. Um, when I look at AI art. I don't really feel, I, I, it could be beautiful, but I'm not like there's some soul and depth to it. It's just AI art, a, a, an artificial intelligence, for lack of a better term, develop that with a human. And I don't get the soul when someone paints whatever they paint, you know, and where they put the hours of the blood. So, so to me, you can have both worlds, but as a collector, I'm collecting art that was painted by a human and only a human didn't have help. I mean, maybe somebody handed him a brush, but he didn't have help from anything else. And that's it. And that's my preference. Now, a hundred years from now, I'm sure there'll be a different preference, right? But for now, I still like the old fashioned, you know, this guy or this girl did this artwork and it took so them away. As, as, a, as, as a juror, as a judge, right. as a person who um, judges prizes, with um with art submissions mm -hmm. how do you actually wrap your head around the fact that an image has been created by a non-human right like an artist could say no 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 i did the work i edited i selected i had the vision i had the i had the creation like if you're doing a garden and you don't like the roses in the garden you change it to dahlias or whatever you're doing the artist would still come back and say no, no, I had the vision to create the image. Therefore, this is my creation. So as a, as a, even as a buyer, you're saying, well, you want heart and soul into your right. paintings. You want to know the artist slaved over it. That's all yeah. good. Um, but how do we reconcile, Paul, you know, about, let's say, I don't want to say legitimate because it's, it is legitimate. Both well, forms are legitimate. How do we deal with this? This is only one other form. I and mean, we went through the same thing with Giclés. Sure. 100%. Um, you know, they're not a traditional print in the digital, in the old digital work. Print. They're not, but they become quite sophisticated at a point where you can hardly tell them when you put a Giclé on watercolor paper uh, of a watercolor style, they're almost very hard to tell them apart. Sure are. So the fakes do come up in the world and they confuse the juror if they're going to be entered into a, uh, into a contest or something. I mean, acrylic paint was the same thing. When the acrylic paint came into in the 60s and the 50s, it wasn't great quality and they were imitating oil paint. That's basically. Yeah. And they finally got it to a point now with the, the new mediums and things, they can always imitate what oil paint looked like. They said rather than just using Im oil paint. Well, what it was, it was painted faster, quicker, uh, let it dry and and, and pump to punch out another one. So it's now been accepted. Acrylic is a, is a good uh, form uh, of painting. Uh, but oils are still traditional and you can still use those because they have a... But the Gicle thing and, you know, what is a real print? It's not a photocopy. It's a, you know, it's one of those things. We've all been through those. So AI becomes another tool. Um, I think... It's just disclosure. I think now even on Facebook, when you do a posting, they're saying, acknowledge whether this is an AI generated image. You, clef, you can click it if you, if you want to, you can click that um, just as a prompt. So I give them credit for that. At least they, they, they come up with uh, one little thing. It's not solving big problems, but um, they, they, you're generating, artists daily are generating millions of images and posting them. Um, why? They want people to buy their stuff. Uh, they want people to see what they're doing, that they're working, they're active in those things. Where is AI going to fit into this? I, I don't usually show a lot of my working drawings of how I get to where I'm going, where AI is, you're kind of working through a program and you're, you know, how else do you tell people what you're doing or how you're doing it? Short of saying, I use these word prompts to create, you know, mm -hmm. 
I, I think we've got a couple of images, you know, an astronaut riding a horse. He said, well, that was the prompt. And yeah, it comes up with an astronaut riding a horse. And I say, well, what, what's that about, right? Why would you want to do that? Like, but I have a feeling in it. We're talking about it in an art context. Yes. We're in the world concept, we are yes. going to need AI. If we're going to go into outer space and live in space, we will need AI to help us do that. Guaranteed. Our science, um, I think there, every uh, major platform is using AI at this point and offering AI services from MailChimp to, you know, Adobe and, uh, you know, Canva. They're all offering AI um, as part of their... Uh, platform um even down to web design i mean it's it's changing dramatically it's another big big thing it's sort of like when he invented the microchip for computers and how things change and pixel pixel art that changed cartooning massively put a lot of people out of work but generated a lot of work for a lot of other artists they had to constantly i don't think we've ever been in a stage in the last 20 years of how much we've had to rethink how we do our job and that job is no longer exists and uh, it's it's scary um because we all want some kind of security in what we do and it gets a little protectionist a little bit and artists are quite adamant about uh you know the you know the line and the brush stroke they put onto a canvas or a substrate i mean it comes down to is is painting on a metal panel copper is that more um you know light fast is it all those things different than a canvas some people like painting on paper it, it's sort of we we try to create work that lasts forever and a day and i go i've always said we'll spend sixty thousand dollars on a car and we're more than willing to let it rot and rust away in five years and we're going to go buy a new one and you spent sixty thousand dollars on it so well you know, where does AI, I'm, you know, I'm digressing here, but the AI fits in here as well. You know, it's, is it a stage like Steve stage one of something coming down the pipe to make it an individual look and feel register it. It's coming. And you're going, why now you're getting protectionist again. So it's kind of hypocritical. Like if you want an open field on everything, and you want to take imagery from somewhere else, your platform that you put something up, somebody can come in, grab what you're doing, and just finish using AI, a couple of changes of words, and now it's your image in, a, in your context of somebody else's image. And don't put your little lip out and feel sorry about it because it, it comes down to respect amongst each other about what you do. And I don't mind having to say, if I use a certain photo image of something that I use as, a, as an idea to create my own image, and I've used words, that's fine if I can do it. But when you do that, you've signed on for somebody else that can do the same to you. It's going to be really hard to register something like this. Well, you so can I can I can I can I read my little bit of research that I did? It's it's so, uh, about copy copyright ownership. Copyright law requires that a work be done by a human to qualify for protection. This means that AI generated works may not be eligible and AI itself cannot hold copyright. You mentioned that, Paul. But then we get into authorship, meaning you as the artist. If the AI is assisting in the creative process, the human artist may still claim authorship. However, if AI is dominant in the creation, authorship may be challenged or contested. So you, you're, you're still, if you're creating your own image from your own thought, even though AI is assisting you, um, that is still okay. What happens is infringement. So AI models train using large databases that may include copyright images, texts, and other creative works. If AI generated works are a derivative, it could raise issues, especially if the works are easily identifiable. So, you know, what they're saying is artists, you can still use AI generated images um, and, and, and it's assisting you, which is what we've just spent time talking about. As long as you disclose, um, 
but AI itself uses large databases that may contain copyrighted images. If I may, two things. One, for your, for your, I, on the judging of art, I guess next time you guys have a, a thing where you're going to judge art, you should have originals and AI helped or influenced, if you will. And then this way, you don't have to make a judgment if it comes in or not. It's like, oh, you painted this all by yourself. Oh, AI helped you? Cool. And it would be interesting then to see how that works itself. Because mm. to me, that would be fascinating to see, oh, this guy spent you know, a year painting this and AI and the artist spent three weeks painting this. That would be an interesting way to judge art as well. Food for thought. The other thing is, I keep saying AI. In theory, this is not AI. So let's just be clear. There is the, there's companies working on AI. This is not artificial intelligence. What this, this is exactly what you said. What they're doing is they're feeding books and photos into LLM. And it's not thinking. All it does is say, if you give me this, I've got these one trillion things that it could become. And then if you give me this, it's these one trillion things that could become. And that's what it, it, it's doing. We have companies that we're working with that are doing true AI that's teaching AI to be AI like a child. Like you're teaching it how to really speak and think and all this other stuff. And that's a whole nother show for another time. But when we say AI, really, it's just a learning model that just happens to use, I think on every prompt, like 32 EVs of energy. Like, you know, if you have 32 electric vehicles, that's what it takes to run a prompt on like ChatGPT. So that's what this AI is. It's not really thinking. It's just doing um, a calculation of probability going, oh, you want a blue dog based on this. This is a blue dog. And then we'll go, no, change it, do that. And it makes your blue dog. So it's really, it, I think it enhances it more I than agree. anything. I agree. So I, I think this, this was early development in the, in the 50s, and it was called algorithmic. Algorithmic. Mm -hmm. Uh, digital imagery that they were working on that in the later 50s. Um, so this is the A could be algorithmic more so than artificial. Right. So because that's that's what you're doing. You're prompting something to source information based on your word prompt. What or at that day typed the type prompt. What are you looking for? It sorts through the database and it finds commonality, commonality, commonality to your word prompt and it puts them together for you. So I think scientists were working on in those in the, that far down, like it's been many, many years. Like it's not just today. It right. didn't just happen here 10 years ago, right? So um, in scientists- How, is, how you know, is AI different though than Photoshop? You don't do the work. Well, photo, Photoshop, well, yeah, it is very different. I mean, only in the uh, Photoshopping things was a big problem for copyright issues in the day as well and suable like because they would take certain imagery and that was sort of somebody else's classic image that they were known for and you take that and manipulate it and make it your own and then sell something from it this was notorious in advertising they always did stuff and you had to be careful what imagery you used for photographically especially and stuff illustration um to sell a product but i think ai is an amazing product for idea generation for graphic designers and in the advertising world because it's artificial it's it's like a two-week window you're going to blow that thing out you're going to sell those shoes say well i need an idea and i want to put fire behind the shoes and i want to do a bunch of little things and you say oh that's what it could look like okay let's generate a little 30 second commercial and we'll use our customer's shoes and we'll use that fire from there and the devil and a bunch of little things. And we have a look that maybe they can trademark in a way they use to say, this is the look for so-and-so shoes and off they go and do it. What do we as artists individually do? Do I do a painting of that? No, probably not. But you could do a surreal painting of some kind where you kind of collage images, the melted clock and a bunch of little things, right? You get yep. to Salvador Dali like. Yeah. And uh, you know, it it, it could be fun, but it, is it I guess down to what is the substrate you put it on, Joanne? Like what are you using to print it off with at this some stage? At some stage it has to go become a visual or is it only kept as an electronic digital image that is on a sc large screen in somebody's house? In other words, that person doesn't want art. All they want is digital art that by a command, it comes up 
maybe it changes all the time. They bought a, you know, and they do that. I can see value in, say, a contemporary modern home where some young 25, 30-ish type of guy wants a, a house. When he walks in the door, the music plays. That's AI. And you know, the clap, the lights, the security of the house is smart. That comes in, big screen TV, walks into a certain room. And then your Salvador Dali painting pops up your, on the wall. Your Salvador Dali version painting comes up because you've you've maybe purchased the rights from somebody to produce it on your wall or in your, well, a lot of times these things are in packages already. You can buy that image Salvador Dali or the um, Monet's or whatever, and they'll just come up on your screen and you pay so many dollars a month just to be a part of that electronic generation. That way your art changes all the time, makes you look kind of hip and cool and for about, and you got your martini and away you go. But that's but, fair. That's fair game. Because Salvador Dali has been dead for more than 50 years, I think. Not sure. I don't think 50 years. Mm, but I think, think so. I think they're like, okay, so let's make an easier one. Let's say Frida Kahlo. So they, they you know, Frida Kahlo image pops up. Well, Frida has been dead since I wrote it down. She's uh, her, her images are now fair game uh, for any artist to use. Um, Picasso, say, uh, same. Mm -hmm. Um, free, so Picasso died in 1973. So, um, any works are now in the United States at 70 years, by the way, in Canada, it's 50. And he pushed it to 70. Yeah, that's Did because of Steamboat Willie. Yeah, and then and that and Disney, and that's literally why because Steamboat Willie, Steamboat Willie, about three months ago became public domain, and Disney was the one who got it pushed from 50 to 70. And then when Steamboat Willie was about to come out, Disney tried to get it to go to 100. And then we're like, enough. Like, you know, like enough's enough. So that's it. By the way, Dolly died in 1989. So. 19, okay, so he's not fair game yet. Not yet. Not yet. A couple more years, Dolly, you're done. Um, so, <laughs> But I, I look at it this way. As long as you disclose it. And I, I'm fascinated by the fact that if I told my AI and then I have a machine that will paint with my AI, not digitally, but painted on a canvas for me, because um, I can't paint, I'm okay with that. And But I would disclose it, it was my words. So when you, what you read earlier, what's to determine what I did and what AI did, I would literally then have to take a screenshot or print the prompts. So if it ever went to court, can I copyright my picture, my painting, if you will, the court would have to decide, did I give you enough prompts before the before I fed it into my computer that painted it? So then that's going to be, I think, that's going to be the legal part of it. It's like do you, it has to be more than 25 lines of prompt or whatever it might be. That's going to be what the next step in, what will constitute artwork that you can copyright. And that will be protected then. I think so that's the next step we're heading. So here's a good one. So um, Van Gogh's Sunflowers, mm -hmm. almost in every competition that I've juried for 10 years, there are always Van Gogh sunflower paintings. Right. Okay. Some of them might be terrific. Uh, they're probably not AI generated, but nonetheless, they're, they're, they're really from the artist's brush. But, right. but the image is very clearly Van Gogh style sunflowers. Right. Do you know what? I'll tell you what I do now when I see that. I will discount it. Discount it's, the, it's, the artwork or discount the image? I will discount, like if, if the artwork is to be juried and considered mm -hmm. with the rest of the submissions, right. even though it might be an absolutely brilliant painting, right. I will discount it. Gotcha. I'm sick and tired of looking at Van Gogh's sunflowers. Right. Well, I think I think that's a personal thing when you've done that. <laughs> I was going to submit. I was going to dogs painters. playing. I was going to submit dogs drinking scotch, playing poker, smoking cigars. But it's been done before. It's yeah, been right. done before. <laughs> so I like that picture. Yeah. <laughs> it was done without AI in the day too. It was though. done without AI. Yeah. So I think. In the, I mean, in the jurying aspect, I, I understand where you're coming from with that. And it does pop up from time to time on other imagery as well. That, you know, the classic imagery that has been out there 
in your eye for ever. Like you said, oh my God. I mean, you look at it, you're right. Well, well painted, but not a lot of imagination. You know, they can paint well, but they don't know what to paint. And this happens a lot of times. Um, but maybe, you know, they should know that Joanne is jurying this one. Do not send sunflower paintings. <laughs> As a qualifier. I hate Joanne. <laughs> and they'll go, yes or no. Okay, I'll have to leave. But that I think one going forward, though, I think you need to I have two categories of original and AI. Because I yeah. think that to your point of that artist who got an image from 18 whatever and decided that she was going to do i think that would be interesting because it would be and then because my question to them is okay so you came up with the prompts you did all this then how did it get painted not that it got it can't get printed how did you paint it because now you need and i know there's machines out there that do the painting once you tell it so to me then that's fascinating because you go back to what the court said so I'm prompting it to do all this. I did nothing, right? My, this did it. My brain did it just like an artist that's going to sit there and go, you know, I think I'm going to paint clouds today. And they, but they not only come up with this, they come up with everything else. So now the question is, goes back to is, to, is 25 lines a prompt? Then you are the master of this. And I think the court at some point is going to have to make that decision because as more people do it and i was speaking to a digital artist that has a show on our channel was saying you know back in the day people would flock to buy their work because it was so different and they were, they were using special programs he said now everybody is a digital artist and they're buying you know on etsy and here and there and he said so like he says it's hard to compete with like a 10 year old who's going to paint puppies that you know is just having ai do it for him and so i was like that's interesting so It'll be it'll be interesting going forward, but for competition, I would like to see that. I think that'd be very cool. I mean, even for the judges to figure out how you're going to judge now original and AI work, but well, then people have to be honest about it. And I don't know if they would be. Oh, I and know. I don't know whether they would be either. <clears throat> yeah, see, it that's the be, issue. Yeah, it would be an interesting competition where you had a subject matter that you were to paint and submit, and you have the AI aspect to it and mm -hmm. hand done whether watercolors or acrylic oils traditional ways of painting and you submit and you say that'd be great for the audience to come and look and say well this is how it was interpreted verbally right and this is how it was like intuitively with your brush right or palette knife or whatever way you do it and you actually have a show but you you like uh, steven said you have a category ai and traditional one or the other but you put them all in the same room and the audience comes in to look at them and you go, oh my gosh, look at that, look at that. There's an educational level that's going on. Do you prefer the tactility and the smell of oils in that? Or do you prefer this nice, slick, clean thing done on, submitted in electronic screen, not on a printed piece of paper? That's coming, Joanne. I'm waiting for that one. Too. Do you have electronic screens to submit my work by? Digital work? Do you, it kind of, counterintuitive right you i produce a piece of digital work on my computer which is shiny screen now i'm going to print it onto a substrate that's matte finished why not submit it with your ipad like why not just say put your ipad on the wall <laughs> and say that is my digitally generated two second video or two minute but video that becomes like an nft and that's that's. I was going to say that NFT. That's an NFT. They're a waste. It's hard to stay away from that today. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's like a all... whole other. That's a whole other. And if thing. listen, when we we when we when we had our little you know our our little three D company back in the day when it was all hot, we would say to somebody, "You have to do poly art," and they'd be like, "What's that?" I said, "If you were to offer an NFT, you have to offer the original piece." And I said, then it's up to me as the buyer, once I own both, if I, if I don't want to hang your original on the wall and I want to get one of those screens that have all the NFT art in it, then it, that's fine. I said, but you just can't do an NFT. I said, we need an original piece to go with it. And this way, I as a, now I buy it and I'm, I'm like, I'm going to keep the original, but I want to sell the NFT. That's great. If I make that's a dollar, great. I make a million dollars. No big deal. That's but great. NFT to me is just a JPEG. So when you're saying someone's going to, if someone's going to submit a JPEG to me as art, no, I want you to get the machine and I want you to have it painted on the canvas. However, it needs to be painted, not as a litho, not as what I want. You have to have your, your AI paint it. 
So you need that equipment because that's part of, to me, that's art. That's what I'm judging. If it's going to be judge my iPad picture, then you're, then it should just be called a digital art competition because then no, I mean, it's not a good or bad, but no real artist that's using a paintbrush and all this other stuff. There's no reason for you to compete. You're right. So if you're going to have both side by side, it'd be like, you have to have it printed on paper, canvas, whatever it is. And I think that then opens up the area more than it's on my phone. Okay. I love, I'm I not, love I, that. I love that. And I think that might be a perfect solution because quite, quite yeah. frankly, uh, artists are concerned about losing economic income mm -hmm. uh, from this as well. Right. And so, or, you know, are artists just going to be out of work period right. because everything can be generated in not three weeks, you know, three minutes. I don't think I don't they'll think ever be out of work because people, I can't paint a mural on a wall. I mean, I guess I can, I take that back, <laughs> but theoretically I can't paint like a mega mural with AI. I mean, I could, I'm sure there's a machine out there that'll do it. No, oh, there, there is. Right, there is. Right? But there's still something to me about the human element where I sit with an artist and I say, here's what I'm thinking. And then they come back and they go this and you're like, wow. Because really, if I don't need them to paint it, I can go to Dali and go, hey, this is what I'm thinking. And I'm like, good, I got it. But I want it for, you know, for me. I don't want it just to be on my, look what I did on my phone. I want it on my wall. So there's a big difference. I think. Well, that's the way we're thinking collectively. Right. We are thinking about it from the human, humanist right. point of view. Maybe 25 or 30 years from now, people don't feel that same way when we when we become so robotic in our mm -hmm. process that that human element is discounted. Right. Yeah. Well, I awesome. Go one more step here. What if we get into the commissional, the commissions stage of doing art? So, you know, we have a request from somebody that wants a piece of art done, a commission, a portrait or a, say a landscape or some family scape where, you know, they're in the field with the farm and, you know, they want all their little elements there. Uh, how does, how does an artist approach that? And if they're an AI artist, they say, well, do you, you, you have digital images of those family members or the portraits and the dog or whatever you want to do, but you incorporate that into a unique piece of work. Um, so you could take a background from somewhere else. I want to be in Paris and I want to be standing on the, <laughs> the Champs Elysees and I want, I want our family to be there with our dog. You say, well, I can do that now. I know you can do that. And why that's do you need an artist to do it? Exactly. Yeah. If that's the case, why do I need to hire someone? I can just go, uh, here's, here's the family photo and right. make this. Do and then yourself. I can go find someone that has a machine and I can have them do, 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 and print it and put it on a canvas. I'm like, look, there's my painting. Correct. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Where's the commissions? Yeah. The commissions drop off uh, for certain types of things. The pet portraits right. and the family portrait and the little thing. You just say, here's scan the image in and then you add prompts mm -hmm. to it. And you say, well, there's my dog, you know, <laughs> picture of my dog. Uh, if you want, I guess it's not. When you ask an artist to do a commission, it's sort of you want that touch of the artist that goes with that. Mm -hmm piece so the dog looks like the dog but it's got the hand of the right. artist involved right. in that response right. that right. that gets that look in the eye that you know that that's my pet it's different than another dog of the same breed i know that that's my dog and some people can get it and a little, most artists can't get it like it's it's one of the, it's a really tough portraits of people are one thing but animals are really it's really hard to get inside the soul of that animal. And certain artists are really good at that. How does AI, can AI do that? You know, AI it's like, can be a tool. If you struggle mm -hmm. with producing, painting a paw on a dog, AI could help you with that. It, you could still mm -hmm. use that paw to correct yourself on the painting. So it would be a helpful tool in that situation. Okay. Yeah. So. There's benefits to it. Like, so there are. Here, here, here's to your point. I can paint my painting of whatever. I could take the picture and I can give it to AI and go, now make it better. Now I've done yes. all the work and now yes. I go make it better. So to, now to Joanne, I'm judging a competition. 
I painted that, Joanne, from, from here to canvas, took a picture, had AI made it better. And I didn't ask for any style, just make it better, make the lines tighter, the color more vibrant. Then I stick it in whatever little machine and it paints it. Now I'm submitting it. Now, am I submitting that as AI or an original? Because technically it's both. Yeah. Well, you've used the algorithm, the algorithm to make the lines tighter and add color or, or punch this up, yeah. punch that up. Um, so I think initially it is yours. You're over 50% is yours. The algorithm. Right. You know, All of it would be mine, really. It's just making yeah. things tighter, which is say, 20% or the paw so, better. So you are using basically your own piece of work. It's just when you're working right. with all the raw materials from the internet to create something. Right. Like Joanne said, some is uh, copywritten material that might mm -hmm. be coming through. Um, and, you're, and you're manipulating, and I'll call it that. That's what you're doing. You're manipulating, and you're, it's cyborging. You're, you're cyborging right. your paintings. You're putting... You know, you're putting the little pieces together, and if it's nothing else, it's it's as surreal as it gets. Right. Um, and then you want to put the smooth blend to it so that it merges everything together. Um, you, you know, minimizing the pixeling and doing you tell it to do all kinds of things. Maybe you're even working with some low res images. You've got to snap them up a little bit so you can use them. But yeah, it comes down to what is the final outcome? Why did you do that? What is its purpose? Is its purpose to sell a one-off or multiples of are they in are they in a print situation or the original one-off um are they to be generated in a projector on a wall like it's like what what is the final purpose of i mean installations are becoming a lot of ai involved in installation stuff now mm -hmm. because it's you're, you're trying to involve an audience and you're uh, you're looking at ways to um, keep them enthralled in what they're doing and pay $30 to come in the door to see what's going on in, in a con say the Van Gogh, uh, the walk through the Van Gogh show, right? Where you walk into the big museum and not, see, not worth the 60, not worth the 60 bucks for the AI yeah. that they charge. You, you know. <laughs> yeah. So there's things, you know, immersive pieces have become, valuable in that they can use ai to generate it's just where are you getting your content from like this it's is a cool. lot of it um and i i think there's some areas there that um i think there's whether well, i forget what there's a digital company that just finished buying five hundred thousand images so they now have the rights to allow those into their platform for using for ai and did those artists get paid those 500 artists, 1,000 artists. They should. They should get I mean, they did if they bought them. If you buy them, you get paid. Them in some way, or did they yeah. sell them through, and they, I, I don't know where they acquired them from, in blocks of 50,000, 50,000, 50, and you put them all together and got a half a million. But it's kind of, at least it's kind of a, mm, an iTunes thing almost. Like It's almost like to a point where they own a block of, uh imagery or music and things we haven't even talked about music we're talking about visual art only but it it's affecting all the arts you know everything from mm -hmm. uh i think david does stuff in his videos and he's done some vampire ones and kind of cool mm -hmm. you know and they just all the ai generated vampire movies what are these seven minute shorts are they about seven minute Six? shorts he's got like 30 of them he's got shorts on that the end of the world he's got he does travel vlogging now with ai <laughs> Um, it does, I mean, he does everything, but he credits it at the very end that right. it's all AI. Like he doesn't, yeah. David's not like David will. And when we talk about it on the show, David will be like, no, no, it's all AI. I just came up with an, he calls it a brain fart. He had a brain fart and he spoke into chat GBT <laughs> and he said, make me a script for this. And chat GBT goes, okay. And it makes him a script. And he's like, cool. And then he gives it to the other AI and says, read the script. And he goes, okay. And it reads the script. And then he gives it to the other and goes, make me images. And it goes, okay. And then he edit, and then he has to edit it though. So he edits it all together and it magically appears like a week and a half later. And I'm like, cool. And that's what we do. He's disclosing. So I think we that's are, true. I think we are as a society, we are, we are, there are, I mean, I know personally my radar is up now with looking mm -hmm. at AI generated images. I just juried two very large national shows, one in Canada and one in the United States, huge right. submissions. And now I went back to the organization in the States 
and I juried, but in my juror comments, I put AI generated image. Right. Now they are going to have the final say in putting the show together. I would bet any money they don't care what is AI right. generated and what is not AI generated. And here's another example for the Canadian um, National Exhibition. There was a painting submitted where the face was done beautifully. It looked like Mona Lisa. Beautiful face, well done. The rest of the painting was shitty. <laughs> <laughs> and I was saying to myself, yeah, like this doesn't make sense, right? right? So I said to the organizers, AI generated, and they went, oh, they yeah. I don't know, they didn't know what to do with it. And I don't think that that we're at the stage where people know how to deal with these things. It's happening, and there's a mishmash. Photography is wild. Photography yeah. is completely. <laughs> wild and trying to figure that out um so it's here it's arrived artists are doing it i just don't know how we are going to grapple with it okay, we'll talk about I, it i go back to my thing that you you say if it was ai helped you at all you say AI hey, helped me 20 percent. i think you give the percentage of it and i don't mm -hmm. think that lessens the work and i don't think it enhances i mean just so the judges know because then if you're saying to somebody, here's it's an original or AI enhanced. And AI enhanced literally could be like we just spoke about it, it tightens the lines. Okay. That was AI that helped you out like three percent. Oh, and what did it do? It tightened your line. Okay. Just, so when you're judging it, now you could you can look and say, Oh, okay, this guy did it without AI, and this guy tightened the lines. I like to tighten the lines better. It's about disclosure. And I and I came yeah. bang up against this. I juried a show in Florida last year. One of the right. images was definitely AI generated. I right. went back to the organizers and I said, please ask the artist if this is AI generated. They scurried mm. out, they came back, they said, he swears he did <laughs> not use AI. Right. I yeah. still discounted I it. it. <laughs> okay. But see, I, I still think though, if, the, if, if I'm gonna run an, a, an art competition, I would say, okay, listen, we don't care if it's AI. However, you need to disclose, and we're not discounting that it's AI. But if you're hundred percent, you know, Joanne and Paul painted the painting. That's what you hundred percent human. If you used AI, whether it's 1% or 99%, don't care. Please just disclose it that, you know, that's, and that will help us when we make the judgment on do you, cause the category is not going to be different, right? You have all original and you have all, you have AI enhanced or AI helped. Now all of a sudden it makes even competition a little more fun. And for the average person, that doesn't have a clue, it makes it more enjoyable for them because they can look at it and say, oh, wow, this is a Picasso. That is all. Oh, look what he did. Oh, and look, this is a stick figure by Steve. That's pretty cool. And it was AI help. All of a sudden, it opens up the art market and people's vision of what an art, art artist and art can be to a whole category of people that probably never even thought about it. Well, what as a buyer, just as an individual buyer, a mm -hmm. private buyer buying a piece of art from an artist that is AI right. generated? So in the buyer's mind, how do they feel about it? Some, right. some buyers will say, hey, this is fantastic. It's cool. It's interesting. It's well done. Love it. My guess is right now, a lot of buyers, if an artist says AI generated or partially AI generated, my guess is that some buyers will think twice. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> I, I know that for a fact because Adam... Um, because of the way he does his stuff, because it is digitally and it, a little AI, a lot of digital. Um, he has a certain group of buyers that just love it. Um, and I'm fortunate enough to have one and I love it. But he just told me like, I said, so what was your process? And he went through the whole thing. It took like three, I, I, you got to own that. I mean, like, because it's the process of what he did. And it all came from his mind. And then he had to go into this program and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Because it wasn't AI. It was all this other stuff. But some of the stuff is just AI, and I'm like, oh, okay, but it's very cool. And some of it you may want to buy, but then when you buy it, you know it's not going to be, if you will, appreciating like a Picasso, if you will, or a Rembrandt or a Renoir, right? It's a nice piece of art that you just happens to make you smile. And as I told people, when you buy something, 
buy something that makes you smile. If you're buying stuff for your appreciation, good luck, because the art mm -hmm. world is a fickle, right? There so is. I buy something, I'm like, I like that. It'll hang on my wall, don't care. Like the, the kids I don't have, when I die, you can figure out what stuff's worth, I don't care. And that's how I look at it. So there's people that buy stuff because it makes them smile, but I would want to still know that whether it, AI tightened the line or not, just for my own edification. Because I can look at that artwork and go, that's really cool. Like I look at the work as I have, all painted by humans, except the picture of the moose from our friend from Canada. You know, that's a picture. But everything I look at is painted by a human. Okay, I yeah. like it. And it makes me feel good. Now, if I know it's, a, it's AI assisted, I'll still like it, but I also know it's not just all human. It's a little generation there. And I'm okay with it, but I want to know about it. I don't want to be, if you will, deceived that, you know, you did it when you really didn't do it. Would you pay the think, same price for it, whether it's uh, AI generated or but, but done by a human hand? In, in there lies the rub. Probably not. Because, <laughs> because the human stuff is, is more time consuming and more this. I understand the prompts, but if I'm, ha if I'm taking a canvas and I'm sticking it through a machine and the machine goes squirt, 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 okay. But still, it wasn't, there's, there's not the time that it took and the skill necessary to produce X. And, and it's in my mind, I'm paying for that. And will. the original is a one off where yeah. AI can be multiple, you can generate multiple. Yeah. But I, I'm just saying, in an AI, say you have Joanne had to do jury an AI show. Mm -hmm. So, and I like Stephen's idea where you say, Me too. Um, here, oh, occasionally, you know, I did I did 10% of the work on this and AI did 90%. Yeah. And you put that picture up on the wall and you do and you go through the other ones. And so the juror actually has the levels of competence. So it's like, say, well, 50 50. Now, all of a sudden, I only I you get the skill level of, say, I did 90 percent of the work and I tweaked it 10 percent with AI. Does that give that one more validity as an right. individual piece of work? And like you said, maybe there's the 25 prompts written on the back. So mm -hmm. experienced AI juror can look at that and say yeah those are the kind of prompts you do yep this is falsified <laughs> you know right. somebody just put some false stuff in there but they'd have to have some kind of official accreditation that that was actually the prompt that you the 25 prompts you print it off and put it on the back and i'm just saying maybe down the road there is going to be ai shows only there will be and yeah. there's well they do now they have nft shows there's a gallery in new york on the on the 17th street pier and you walk in and all their stuff is just NFT art and they're, and they're trying to, and they sell it for stupid money, yeah. whether they use it, they use crypto algorithms or currencies, whatever you want to call it, or they, or people pay cash. And I'm like, really interesting. Really? Um, and, and, and I'm okay with it, but I always ask the same question. Even when I buy art, I'm like, is even if it's, a, if sometimes I buy a sculpture and I'll be like, is there another, That's you right. know, like. It's like, it's, uh, don't do lithos. You don't do etchings because you never break your stones. So you're going to use it again. They're like, is there another? No? Okay. Now talk to me. Now when you start telling me the price is stupid, I'm like, okay, but there's not another. It's like we buy Chinese artifacts because there's not another. Same reason we buy art. There is not another. You know, and that's the mentality because I want to be, a, not that I don't want anybody else to enjoy it, but I want to know that I'm the only one that can enjoy this. Yeah, and that's yeah, yeah and, and that's a big thing about art collecting is you know now for people that can't I don't care that they buy something one of 500 cool. when I was poor that's what I did and as you grow and you get more assets and you're like I want things that only I can enjoy for now I'm okay with that so that's, I that's think that's where we're at show. that's a whole yeah, other that's, show. that's a whole nother show in fact this show has been great and we should probably do a whole nother show when Joanne has time so, because uh, and, and, and thanks, guys, because I'm just going to increase my jury fee the next time I jury show. <laughs> I would do that. So, and feel free to use our ideas, and we only charge a little bit. Anyway, yeah. and it was I only AI generated. So. <laughs> I, love, I love your idea. I really well, and truly do. But I'll tell you, many, many organizations, jurors, they're completely out on left field with this stuff. Yeah, I'm sure. It's, yeah. It, this is, you have to embrace this. This is like... Like when the Model T came, you got to say, well, maybe we're going to get up the horse and go with the car. The what same with the EV. Want, what do you mean same you want thing. more than black? What do you mean yeah. you want more than black for a More than black? That's great. Really really yeah. <laughs> so it's one of those things. So I think over time they will. And depending as, on the jurors' ages, I think, if you get someone who's 90, their mindset is one thing. And if you get someone who's in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, their mindset's a little different because 
they've been around with technology constantly changing since birth. You right. know, at a certain age, it's like, I remember the Model T and that's it. Oh, well, it doesn't work but that you way. You do have to embrace change. And, and I think for artists, it's exhausting yeah. to think about just one more thing, copyright now that they have to worry about. Or, you know, it's <clears> just they already have a lot of things to do that they don't like to do. Right. And now it's just one more layer of hassle. Yeah, I, think, I agree. I think a lot of it, you know, we all decide, like, I've probably got, 50 different types of mediums here that I use. Do I use them every day? No, I don't, you know, I'll use ink one day, the next day I'll use just a, a oil paint and that, and I'll do that, right? So do I have acrylic? Yes. Do I have oil? Yes. Do I have uh, pastels? Yes. And I think this is another tool. Do, do I need to use that today for the job I'm doing, right? The AI thing, you say, well, I'm going to cause Joanne some problems. So yes, I want to use AI, <laughs> you know, because when I do my submission, but I think it's it's kind of it's up to the artist. I mean, really, it's the artist's decision in the end whether they want to use it or not, and mm -hmm. and disclose it relative to the rules. Where if it's in competition, mm -hmm. or you disclose it to your buyer that you use these kind of things, or I don't know. I think. We've just added a huge piece to the portfolio, and some want it, some don't want it. And sure. when you're at a certain age, you, do you want to add that to your repertoire, right? Do you, do, you want, do, you, do you want that added on? Is it, do I want to say I'm an AI artist? Now, if you do that, is that a stigma to say, oh, I'm an AI artist on top of I do these other things? I mean, you'll have a digital content artist who puts that on. He said, well, no, I want to get traditional painter. Mm -hmm watercolor artist right i'm just an artist but it's a tool yep we don't we yeah. don't frown on those people that use digital submissions mm -hmm. i don't in the um, day we did though in the beginning we in did the, begin the beginning it was not as acceptable um as traditional works um, but I, I think we have to get over the idea about cheating right that artists think it's cheating and if we can get over, if we can get over that hump, that moral and ethical hump, um, then we arrive at a different level where artists mm -hmm. can now say, "Yeah, I, this is another tool for me. Whether I use it regularly or I use it occasionally, that's it's whatever. But I have that available to me. And quite frankly, I think it's a fantastic tool to have in your toolbox. It's just a matter of using the right language in your head." to say, no, I'm not cheating. Right. I am embracing. I, I, yeah, I'm not going to be tracing Stephen's stick bigger. You know, hey, no, hey, hey, don't make fun of my stick fingers. <laughs> no, no tracing, no using of an enlarger, right? That's when right. Project, when you project work, and that used to be a huge stigma, is the projection of imagery and the tracing of stuff. And they oh, project. I've been there with that too. Yeah. <laughs> and been it, there. Yeah. So there's, that became well, let's, a jury issue. Let, anyway, let's have a, a top, uh, an AI is art number two. And what we'll do is we will actually invite some of the hosts from our other shows Lovely. that are actually AI artists. Lovely. And we can have this dialogue and they can tell you how they create and why they create. And that would be very cool. And then this way, um, the, the, the fans can then, or the artists and then can decide or they can make nasty comments against them and uh, go from there. But yeah, we could do that. <clears throat> That'd be a fun show. Yeah, and look forward to seeing what's going on around the world as well, not just in North America. Oh, they'll show their stuff too. Are you kidding? Okay, please. If they get a chance to show their I wanna bring I wanna print my bear and show my bear. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. So there you go. I'm gonna submit my bear to one of Joanne's shows just for fun. I go one hundred percent AI, Joanne. There you go. Bring it on. Bring <laughs> it on. Go. Show me, show me what you got. There you go. Guys, okay. it was a pleasure to see you both. Paul, I'll see you next week. Joanne, it's always good to see you. Thank I you love so your insight. Much. Thank you so much for joining us today. Paul, it's always good. Everybody, don't forget, live every, or I should say, watch us every Thursday. Um, this show will actually be a podcast as well. So wherever you get your podcast, look for Two Old Farts Making Noises and Canadian Art Today, and you can hear all about AI, or you can catch us here on YouTube. All right, everybody, we'll see you soon. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks so much, guys.